Hey guys, I'm here with Roberta Capsalis. We're overlooking the beautiful Aegean Sea over Marathon Bay. We are at the Greek Goes Keto, Keto Carnival Resort, Resort and Retreat rather. And Roberta is going to show us a low carb ketogenic and potentially carnivore recipe. And what are you gonna be making for us today? Uh, well, even though we are Greek Goes Keto, we are gonna prepare something traditional Italian. Uh, that's why we are using mascarpone cream cheese, which you can see here. What is the recipe going to be? It. It's going to be the tiramisu. Everybody knows uh, tiramisu is one of the most adored dessert when people go to visit Europe or uh, it, in, in particular Italy. In Greece, it's also extremely popular. This thing can turn into a beautiful carnivore or keto ice cream. So when you are on vacations, you don't have to cheat. You don't have to eat those sugary things often. You can have something uh, nutritionally dense from great dairy, which is available in this region. And we're gonna give it a Greek twist. I know Italians will not forgive me this, but we have to add some ancient Greek sheep yogurt that we are going to mix with the mascarpone base. So, so what, are, what, what, are the, what are the ingredients that we have all together? So let's go step by step. First, we have here our mascarpone. We used approximately a kilo because there's a lot of us. And then mascarpone in each country, the best thing you can do is search for an Italian production. If you're lucky enough to get buffalo mascarpone now, that would be you are in heaven and then you have A2 casein, casein. And many people are quite good if they have problem with casein. A1 causes problem, but A2 is actually safe. This is our ancient Greek sheep's yogurt. Yep. If you uh, see, it has like a really thick consistency, almost like a cream cheese, right? So that's a that's a sheep yogurt. And it's interesting the, the, the way this is sold in actually clay pots here exactly. locally. Exactly, it's sold in clay pots and then you get to keep the clay pot. And the clay pot is the best way to cook whatever you like to cook in the oven. And it's oven safe, like the ancient people did. And it actually, on Grigo's Keto, we have a whole article about why it's safe and good to cook in clay pots. You get benefits, and it's like the ancient way people did for thousands of years, thousands of years. And we saw some of these in the museum. They look exactly the same. So you get to keep it. You go to the supermarket or the farmer's market. You get yourself some sheep or goat yogurt, and then you get to keep the clay pot. Do whatever you want with it, but I would definitely make a souffle or cook some meat, bake some meat, something like that. Fish also. Fish, let's say like a, uh, a layered uh, uh, moussaka. That's a Greek recipe. And, and that yogurt that, that yogurt was made very fresh, right? It was yes, like... it was made most probably yesterday. Wow, wow, that, that's amazing. And we, that's when we bought it. If we went today, it would be today's yogurt. Wow. So it's trained Greek yogurt for you, but here in Greece, you don't say Greek yogurt, it's already just and, yogurt. But that's sheep's milk, okay. Sheep's or goat mainly, traditionally, because we, uh, well, in, we are at the moment in marathon area, where sheep and, they, and goat dairy is abundant, and we have uh, really uh, this nice, nice flavor. It's not, people are afraid of this, like unusual flavor of uh, sheep and goat dairy. Not here, not in Greece. Give it a try, try it, and let us know what you think. We're gonna add just a little bit of sea salt, which I grind into powder so that it grinds better, so that it doesn't destroy the uh, texture. Why I'm adding this? When we are cooking with uh, sweeteners, we prefer monk fruit. So you can use stevia if you like it, but I would say monk fruit will give honey flavor. And then you will, uh, you know, you will get quite a, a better result. A little bit of sea salt always to your desserts, especially creamy desserts. And let me ask you because the yes. mascarpone we used 1,000 grams of mascarpone. We had four of these 250 exactly. gram packs. One kilo, and then two the, pounds. And that's a one kilo thing of sheep's yogurt? That's it. Okay, so, so one two one, kilos so one of, one. of our creamy substance. Uh, we do not have a whisk right now, so we're gonna improvise. They don't have whisks in Greece. <laughs> no, they do, but something happened and the villa which we rented didn't come with a whisk. But we are Ketonians and carnivore people so we do improvise and we you can see here 
as I'm mixing, these two things are getting uh, homogenized. And homogenized. Oh, so, uh, thank you. Homogenized. Thank you. I'm not native in English, so I have Dr. Baker here too. And we're at this beautiful villa. You can see, you can look around and see, uh, you know, how, how nice it is. We've got a nice pool here. Again, we're overlooking uh, the beautiful Aegean Sea, overlooking Marathon Bay. Uh, the traditional city of Marathon is just, just down the road from Ancient us. Marathon. Ancient Marathon, where they had the battle against the, the Persians, right? The Persians, right. some 5,000 years ago. And then that's where Marathon comes from. If you guys don't know, they there was a, a what was it, what was the fellow's name? Fidipides. Uh, Fidipides was the... General and then the guy who ran the authentic marathon, his name. What? Well, sorry, Fidipides was the sorry the guy who ran, and then the general was called Miltiades. Miltiades, yes. So, but you need to come here, explore the area, learn all about it in the museum, and maybe once per year they're running the authentic marathon. Give that's it a in, try. That's in November, right? Yes, and they they run from marathon all the way to Athens. And it's the distance That's of exactly. a marathon, right? Yeah. 42 <laughs> kilometers for you. 42, the meaning of life. That's the number. I don't know, miles? And you, and Maybe it's, you know. 26.2, I believe. But the, 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 uh, the original guy that did it, he was going to alert the, the, the troops about a battle. And when he ran, he ended up dying at the end of the race, correct? Yes, yeah. because he was exhausted from running to Sparta prior to going to Athens. So unfortunately, he died, but he made it to history. So let's look at the consistency. Maybe we can get a close up of the so consistency. So far, of that. everything is carnivore friendly. Yeah. Salt, sheep yogurt, and mascarpone. Mm -hmm. Dairy, for those carnivores who can do dairy. So you can see the consistency is quite nice and creamy, almost like whipped cream, right? Mm -hmm. We got a nice consistency with this spoon. Mm -hmm. And look at it, almost like ice cream. If you freeze this, it will make a beautiful ice cream. And here we are. Italians always use just the yolks. I normally make this with whole quail eggs, but they were not available today. So we went traditionally, as Italians do, just the yolks. We yeah, cracked ten, some ten. ten. Looks like ten yolks. Ten there. of yolks. Let's okay. now scoop this golden thing out of this bowl and mix it. That's your basically carnivore uh base for tiramisu if you don't want to use any sweetener you can just eat it as it is because mascarpone is sweet it's it's really sweet it gives you this natural sweetness of milk now uh, do, they, do they make mascarpone from sheep as well or is it always from from cow there's a version uh with the buffalo and the version with cows so okay. in italy usually you can find cows but uh, buffalo products are even better. They are sweeter. They have this really, really creamy consistency. They taste amazing. Okay, so we got ourselves something like vanilla color of white here. Maybe you can see. And that's now ready. Here we go now with the sweeteners. If you want to make it paleo or, uh, or simply you prefer honey, you can add some honey have a look at here we have some really nice sage honey locally produced not far away from here but we are going to go for monk fruit right okay. and so just just a question on honey i noticed you have a wooden spoon oh, in there. Yes. what is the significance of using wood so uh we should never touch honey with a metallic spoon it changes not only the flavor it can oxidize so it does it's not so good for you and especially if you keep using metallic then the honey gets um like almost like spoiled it will change the flavor and why to do that let's do it traditionally so you can use wooden or plastic tools to scoop some uh, honey out of your jar so I'd, I'd like to add a concentrated uh, monk fruit powder it's just dried monk fruit nothing else they made it into powder it's not industrial if you have a good grinder and you are living somewhere where monk fruit grows you just dry it and then ground it into powder we are going to use i'm sorry can i take a take a little taste of it before the monk fruit goes in before yes please please would you would you like take this spoon please Just and then i'm bit. gonna use the so gonna yes. see how. so if it's not sweetened how does it taste it's actually use. quite good it's, it's it's a little sour but it's it's quite it's still that's from the delivery. sheep yogurt yeah yeah it's good the sourness comes from the sheep yogurt and now we will go with one 
teaspoon, a little bit height hipped. Heaping teaspoon. Heaping. Okay, there you are. That's all we need. Let's close this jar because there's some wind. We don't want to lose the precious sweetener. Okay, so now we're gonna mix. Now it's becoming, let's say, keto because we use the sweetener. The sweetener comes from the from the plant world, but it's like really these are details. These are uh, the spices to life. So we are ready now. What makes mascarpone interesting is this vanilla flavor. We're gonna add just just tiny little bit of vanilla. That's it. And that's the base. We can create our first layer. Let's take a ladle. So you go with a little bit of the white cream on the bottom of your glass. It's nice to serve it in a glass. Now, of course, you have to chill this. It has to be really, really cold in order to enjoy it properly. Okay. And then I'm gonna use this bowl to show you how to make the dark part because some of you might not want this. Tell me, Dr. Baker, do carnivores drink coffee? Do they dream of coffee? <laughs> uh, is it? Yeah, some do, some do. And uh, you know, I've, I've talked about coffee many times. Some people uh, actually do better when they remove coffee from their diet. Other I people see. don't. So it's kind of one of those things you have to see what your individual tolerance is. Uh, you know, I, I tell people when they start carnivore, don't give up coffee because it's too stressful physiologic for, physiologically for them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it may be something three, six months in, you may want to experiment with giving up coffee. But if you find it, you, you tolerate coffee well and it's beneficial for you, then this would be something that you could certainly partake in, I suppose. Why not? You're on your vacations and you will not actually drink coffee you will just have a flavor of coffee here i have pre prepared a very intense espresso you can use whatever coffee you prefer but espresso is so authentic espresso is used in uh, in uh, tiramisu so we're gonna add these are two shots so for two kilos of cream we add we are adding two shots of espresso we're gonna add just half so that we are sure it's dark enough and then we have for another batch you can see here how nicely it's mixing and then it will have flavor of coffee okay, i can smell it yeah i like I, you know it's kind of funny i don't really enjoy, enjoy coffee, coffee but you but, like but i like the way it smell. it smells i like the way it smells it especially smells in nice. the morning smells extremely inviting actually uh, my husband apolinas who is the founder of grigo's keto uh, always says that it's a great pre-workout. You take a shot of uh, really strong espresso and then you hit the gym. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, there are there's actually quite a bit of literature showing uh, an ergogenic mm -hmm. uh, benefit to coffee for a lot of people. It's actually, it's actually a recent study that shows showed actual strength gains oh. it, it comparing coffee to placebo. So I mean, there, there's some 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 level that it can be beneficial. So it could be beneficial. Let's have this. So it's got kind oh, of. A, would you like to try it, or is it a problem because it has uh, yeah, coffee? I'll try, Just I'll give I'll it try, a try. Let, so. Let us know if it's sweet enough. Yeah, it's, it's, Do yeah, you it's think good. we need to add more sweetener? Not for me. I think it's pretty, okay. Pretty good. Then if not for you, it's nobody very... will want it. We are all Ketonians, carnivores, and low carbers. So we're gonna put this on top of our, uh, let's say, uh, our, our white tiramisu. White yeah, okay. Yeah. Tiramisu in a glass. There will not be any. Uh, no, we will not use any nuts or any. Oh, oh, I'm trying to avoid. That's why I have the paper here. Let's clean this up because this is presentation. We want, we want to present it properly. Okay, that's gonna be very nice. Have a look here, and the final touch. Okay, again, a maybe tricky subject. Some carnivores still crave chocolate and in order to cut these uh, like to have sometimes occasionally once per month as we call it the mini protocol you just just tiny little bit of raw cocoa or cacao as we like to call it because it's uh, it's raw it's not processed powder 
And then that's going to give you a yeah, nice look. And that's a nice amazing. decoration and also a little bit chocolate flavor on top. So have a look. So that's this gonna, is our that's gonna go into the fridge. tiramisu. We're going to make more than uh, six because we have enough. At least I think 12 portions, 12 servings. And then all of us will enjoy it. Some of us will share it because it, there's like 16 of us but uh, I'm sure that everybody will like it. Nice close up of that. So it looks quite good. It looks quite good. Authentic. It smells nice. Carnivore friendly. And now let's say for, for the one, for those who will, would like to add some honey, let's just add a tiny little bit on top. Tiny little bit, like another level of decoration. Have a look here. And that's all you need. Honey is extremely sweet, especially if you go carnivore or keto for some time. After that, your taste buds, they can feel sweetness in anything. So this is even amplified version. Could we have a close-up of this keto carnivore dessert? Greek Ghost Keto Retreats happen every year. So if you would like to join us, check out what we offer. Besides cooking by the pool and swimming and seeing the... Uh, ruins, I mean the archaeological sites, museums, and exploring nightlife, eating out in Greece. Did you like your uh, uh, tavern experience? Meat tavern, seafood tavern, what was what was better for you? Yeah, I mean, they were both wonderful. I, I really enjoy, I don't eat a lot of seafood, but the seafood here was tremendous. We had some uh, calamari, some octopus, some uh, uh, sardines, uh, some uh, mackerel, uh, several other dishes there. Uh, some, a nice cheese. The dairy here is phenomenal, by the way. And then the other, then uh, last night or the night before, we went to another tavern, uh, and they had a la whole lamb on a spit. And we had, we basically, I think between skewer. all of us, we on a big yeah, skewer. On a big skewer. Uh, I think between all of us, we ate the whole lamb. I think something like that. So it was quite <laughs> something quite like nice. that. Lamb is very well featured here, so uh, I can I can't recommend highly enough this Greek goes keto retreat. It's wonderful. Uh, it's you know you guys do it every year. I think you do it yes, different, different do. areas like Greece, Croatia, Croatia uh, Greece, places like that. So, so beautiful place out under the Mediterranean sun. Uh, a beautiful time. Great people. Everybody here has been wonderful. We've had great food. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for teach us a little bit about this recipe. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? Well, uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to show this, and I hope. It will help to those who are just switching and they keep saying, I can't do without sweets. So maybe do our Numenia protocol. Ancient Greeks were eating special cake only once per month. It was uh, made in honor of their gods and they would honor them on a day of a new moon. And then the rest of the month, they wouldn't eat sweets because sugar was not available. They only had honey and honey was really precious. So they would save it for that special day so let's try it that way to overcome the cravings for sugar yeah i think i think dessert should be something i i rarely have Rare. ever eat it but it should be something that if you're going to eat it it should be on very special occasions not everybody's birthday but just maybe your birthday or some wonderful special occasion but but you know but vacations also vacation for some, our special yeah, yeah, yeah. occasion especially if you travel very far away so you want to feel Grigos keto retreats include carnivore and keto options also low carb and last night we actually had a paleo option for those who wanted to try so everything's optional we are adjusting to you so if you decide to join us let's enjoy it together what are you what you're saying siga, siga. stay ketonized to the full potential but always stay positive because positivity is what makes us feel better and survive all the things in life. Awesome. Thank you, Rupert. Thank you, Dr. Baker.